Hi, my name is Nicolas Hofner, otherwise known under the username Sheen Mera. Pretty much everywhere on the internet I own this name. Not legally, I guess, but whatever. I'm going to be doc talking about graphical user interfaces in Common Lisp. And well, for native ones, we have just MacClim. And well, that's about it already. And this is a question that we get on the Lisp Freenode channel, channel frequently enough, which is just about what can people use to actually produce GUIs in Lisp? And aside from MacClim, and ba well, you could write your GUIs with just writing with a web server, but that's not really native anymore. But aside from MacLim, what you have to use is just other languages, toolkits, which are, for example, just Qt, GDK, LTK, and Swing, and so on. There are so many of them. I'm not going to be talking about all of them. I'm just going to focus on Qt, which is gigantic, well-documented, cross-platform, and all sorts of wonderful things. But sadly, it's written in C++, and that's a big downside because C++ doesn't have a standard calling convention, so unless you intimately know the compiler of the C++ library, you can't really interoperate with it. What you do instead is you write C wrappers around your C++ library, and that's what Smoke does for us, uh, written by the KDE folks. And they can also do Qt, and we use that through Common Qt, which allows us to use Smoke from Common Lisp out, specifically CCL, SBCL on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'm not sure if other uh, implementations and combinations work as well. I haven't tested them, only these two, and they seem to work fine. Uh, Common Qt is still actively supported and worked on right now. Once Clasp a new C++ interoperating common Lisp implementation is up and running fast. Stasat, Stasbukaref, I'm not sure about the name, sorry about that, is going to use it to write native bindings. Uh, but that's a while out. For now it just works basically. You can use it out of the box once you have your smoke binding set up on your system. It's going to just do whatever you want it to do but it's awkward to use, so you probably won't want to work on a big project with Common Qt alone. I'm going to show you why. We're going to make it just a really tiny example, which is enough to show that it's problematic. We have a window with a button, and when you click it, it prints the standard output, very minimal. And this is the code for that. We define a class with our, our Qt class meta class. A Qt super class, which is the Q widget for us, and then a slot, which is kind of the uh, Qt terminology to receive signals, so events from buttons and so on. And then we have an initializer method to set up our button and layout and connect the signals together and put the button on the layout. And finally, a really tiny method that does just the printing. This is not optimal. This kind of style results in really long methods and big things that you know from our toolkits and other languages if you use them. And I'm not a fan of it. In common Lisp, usually my functions are really small and I like to keep them that way if possible. It also uses this hashtag underscore syntax to call out to uh, C++ methods, which is suboptimal since it just feels like a mix of methodologies and I'd like to have it closer to a list. So this is my dream example basically. We have just a defined widget form which is kind of like def class with the only difference that it takes a Qt class as its first direct superclasses argument and then you, take, uh, you can have sub widget forms that def basically define slots on your widget and then you have other macros like define slot, define override and define signal to define all these sorts of other options that you would have to put into the def class statement which is just basic common Qt and this allows distributing the workload and making it more uh, list like. Also the use of de uh, declarations to handle the connections and other things like that. And you can actually use this code, this is runnable if you use Qtools 
which is my collection of utilities that grew into full convenience layer over time and it now makes writing GUIs with Qt look rather normal and less and it also takes care of C++ garbage collection for the most part using a finalizer uh, system in the back I'm not going to go into that but it works fairly well if you pay attention you're never going to get away for free with just garbage collection once you start interoperating with things but this makes it fairly painless it also does all sorts of other things like name conversion and type conversion and all that one thing here of particular note is the Q plus package prefix methods which are Q plus is just the container package for all wrapper methods that are actually C++ methods in the back and how it does that is it is basically a reader macro on the open parent that detects if you're in a Q plus package if you are then what it'll do is it'll rewrite the form to a macro call which then compiles a wrapper function around the method you're trying to call on the fly and then outputs an actual call to the newly generated function so what that means is it's not necessary to compile all the I'm not sure how many thousand tens of thousands of methods beforehand that Qt op offers you can compile wrappers on the fly have the additional benefit of documentation strings and argument count checking and so on so that's really nice uh, you get you can get Q tools right now on Quicklisp and GitHub. I wrote a lot of documentation for it, so right now the project is listed as HTML on GitHub because, well, it's more documentation than actual common Lisp code. So go read that. I also wrote a couple of examples that show what you can do with Q tools. There's a Twitter client, a small game engine, and a music player, and so on. So have a look if you have any feedback. I really love to hear about it or if you're just going to intend on using it for a project I'd also like to hear about that. I'm really interested in what people might do with this. Thank you for your time.